Some pretty crazy video out of Japan capturing the moments that a rocket that was on its inaugural trip exploded shortly after takeoff. Check this out. The rocket exploded just seconds after it took off, leaving behind it a large cloud of smoke and fire near the launch pad. Japan's space agency was trying to become one of the first companies to put the satellite up into orbit. The explosion is now under investigation, but let's bring in Dan Riskin. CTV science and technology expert, and a guy who loves rockets and space as well. So, what happened? What went wrong here, Dan? I also love explosions, and this was definitely a very good explosion. I like it when nobody gets hurt, and nobody got hurt here. So we can we can enjoy the explosions because this is part of how the progress gets made. But uh, it looks like this was a self-destruct scenario. So it looks like the the rocket ship realized that something was amiss about one of the readings on one of its sensors. Now, whether that was true or not will be part of an investigation. It looked like it was doing the right thing, but you know, there are all kinds of sensors measuring how it's, you know, its position, its acceleration, the temperature of different parts of the rocket. And uh, the way it was programmed was if things aren't exactly the way they should be, it needs to self-destruct. Because the last thing you want is an out of control rocket that lands on somebody or something like this. So. Uh, once the rocket realized that things were not what it was expecting, not nominal, as uh, space people like to say, uh, it self-destructed. And so that's why it happened so quickly and so spectacularly. All right. So the company involved here called Space One and, you know, Japan's space agency, uh, no doubt watching very closely as well. How much of a setback is this or not? Do these things happen? These things happen. I mean, so you've got this interesting transition that's happening around the world from countries going to space to private companies going to space. And we're seeing that in the United States, certainly, as SpaceX has more and more uh, success as they build their systems. And NASA takes uh, a more and more sort of backseat to the progress that's being made by private industry. This is the same thing happening in Japan. So this is a private company. Uh, they were going to be the first private company to put a satellite in orbit from Japan. The Japanese Space Agency just landed on the moon. So they're, they're doing fine, thank you very much. I mean, they have hiccups. Their lander didn't quite land right way up, and it was on its side. But they've got other things going on. They've certainly got farther than this from a launch pad. So here you've got a private company. And uh, what I found so I, I love, I mean, there's something about the translation from Japanese. There's also something about the way that CEOs talk about their products. But, you know, th th what they're saying is this is not a failure because we learn something every time, right? And so to have a, a rocket blow up like this and say, it's not a failure. It, mm. it feels a little bit like 1984 doublespeak to me. You know, it, 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 clearly it was a failure. Clearly there was an explosion, but yes, they will learn from it. And that's just sort of the trajectory for these private companies. We see the same thing from SpaceX. Elon Musk almost celebrates those explosions. I'm sure he'd rather have fewer of them, but uh, you know they put together highlight reels. SpaceX puts its own highlight reels together of those explosions. And so uh, it's just acknowledged that these explosions really are part of the learning process. And hey. as long as there aren't people on board, it, it's fine. Yeah, I'm also curious just to get your read on, on and you touched on it a moment ago, Dan, you know, the different companies that are involved here, but also the different countries. You know, you've got obviously the Americans, the Europeans, the Russians, the Chinese, the Indians, the Japanese, Arab countries. You know, everyone's trying to be part of this here. Why? What, what's the, uh, the heart of the strategy here? There are a lot of different reasons that countries want to be in space. One is just to show pride in the country. I mean, you look at countries like India that are that have fab fabulous technology and to be on a world stage and to say, you know, we can land on the moon. Uh, that really uh, speaks volumes about how they want to be perceived as a country. But there's also the more fundamental thing about, you know, wanting to have your satellites uh, work for you and being worried that your neighbors might have a satellite network that doesn't work for you. Uh, Japan sits very close to China. China is a very powerful country uh, with uh, lots of things in orbit uh, around the world. Um, meanwhile, the U.S. has lots of satellites that are in orbit and private companies like SpaceX and Starlink are putting things into orbit. And so as that game accelerates, countries start to worry about their own you know, national security in terms of having access to the satellites and the information. I mean, if everybody's satellites, uh, you know, if Canada suddenly couldn't use their cell phones, I think we'd have a bad day. I, I think that would really uh, have a big impact. And you can imagine it's the same for people in Japan. So so in the big picture, uh, you know, Japan needs to be accelerating its its technology and having private companies from Japan putting things into orbit is a good way to go forward. Uh, and, and while this does look like a giant smoldering explosion on a hillside in Japan, 
I think the picture is actually much rosier. I think what we're seeing is just the, the kinds of bumps in the road that happen as a space program develops. And so I'm sure the people of Japan will be looking forward to the next Space One launch. And uh, maybe there is a, a more truth to that statement by that CEO that this isn't a total failure. Maybe I should be giving it a little more credit than I did. We'll see you out in orbit, my friend. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll talk to you soon. Dan Riskin joining us, science and technology correspondent for us at CTV.